You've probably seen their commercials for erectile dysfunction meds, but today, Hims and Hers will look to find its own stimulation via the stock market. The consumer product seller began trading on the New York Stock Exchange under the ticker symbol Hims after doing a SPAC deal with Oak Tree. Joining us now to discuss is Hims and Hers co-founder, Andrew Dudum. Andrew, good to, uh, good to speak with you this morning. Uh, full disclosure, I'm surprised to see the market reception here to your, to your stock in the early going down slightly. Are you surprised in, in anything you put your finger on, on why this response? You know, the, <clears throat> the beautiful thing about the market is it goes up and down and, and you don't really know. The stock's up 60% in the last month or so. So I think a lot of that SPAC dynamic is built into that growth. Um, because of that structure, you have a little bit of a different dynamic than a traditional IPO where they, they pop overnight. So, you know, we're really excited about where the stock is trading today. And I think most importantly, we're really excited about the next five and 10 years of us innovating in the healthcare system. You know, Andrew, I'd love to just take a step back if I can and, and ask about um, what, what the model is here. Um, as Brian mentioned, we were just chatting, you know, before the break. I think a lot of our viewers are probably familiar with um, the commercials. They, they know that Hims is a brand, and I think the brand is quite strong. Um, but what part of the um, health pharmacy system are, are you really going after, and, and what do you see as the opportunity there? Yeah, the opportunity with Hims and Hers is really to rebuild, essentially, the healthcare system in a consumer-first way. So anybody in this country can go to forhims.com or forhers.com. They can identify a condition such as maybe anxiety and depression or a dermatology issue such as acne or, or aging that they might be concerned with, and then immediately get connected with a licensed physician in their state, get the medications they need, a personalized treatment plan for them, and then have that delivered to their door, all for a price point of roughly $20 to $30. So we operate outside of the traditional healthcare system. We've rebuilt everything from that consumer front door, that, that brand that people know across this country, but have also built the distributed network of physicians and providers across the country, our own EMR, our own 300,000 square foot pharmacy and fulfillment center, to be able to deliver this start to finish healthcare consumer experience in a way that really hasn't been brought to market today. And so I think that's so much about you know, what has been driving the acceleration of the business growing 90% year over year last quarter, 76% gross margins, and having powered close to 3 million medical visits in just the last couple of years since launch. It's just really unprecedented growth when you think about the fact that we're living in a, in a healthcare type of experience. Andrew, it's Julie here. It's one thing to diagnose online something like baldness, pretty obvious, right? Um, but how how far does this go um, in terms of what you're going to be able to do and what your addressable market is and, and what your plans are? You know, it's a great question. You know, when we talk to our board of directors, which is made up of in incredible um, healthcare executives and leaders in this country, Dr. Toby Cosgrove from the Cleveland Clinic, our chief medical officer, Patrick Carroll, who is the chief medical officer of Walgreens, we debate you know, what portion of the US healthcare system is gonna be moved to a digital first experience like him's or hers. And the overwhelming consent is, is something around 75 to 80%. So that means 75 to 80% of the reasons that you go into a brick and mortar hospital will eventually in the next five plus years be moved to a digital first world. And that might include at-home diagnostics, as, a, as an example, at-home testing. It might include at-home um, continuous monitoring systems on your, on your body, on your Apple Watch for glucose management, as an example. But when you think about the fact that 80% will be moving to a brand or a system like Hims and Hers, and then you realize and step back that the U.S. healthcare system is about a $4 trillion market, you know, this opportunity is, is, is massive, right? And I think it's really the earliest of innings in the next five and 10 years, and the regulations have just made it possible. Uh, and I think the consumer expectation has also just made it possible where you can now have a digital experience where you can pick up your phone and access great healthcare. And I think we're, really, we're all really excited about what that future could look like. Andrew, is this the year your company will be able to accept uh, insurance? You know, it's something that we'll, we'll likely be able to roll out uh, either this year or next year. It's a, it's a capability that is really important specifically for those individuals that need medications or treatments that are highly specialized. Um, and in most situations, those are on patent drugs. As an example, Truvada is an amazing drug, uh, prevention of HIV with 99 plus percent efficacy. 
but that drug is is near two thousand dollars per month. Um, and until that gets fixed, us being able to offer insurance on the platform will unlock our ability to treat people with these medications that otherwise do not have generic options. Um, however, for the majority of our business, there are great generics available, and because of that, we're able to not only help treat the patient, diagnose the patient, give them a formulation, but also have that medication shipped to their, to their door, all for a very simple price of twenty to thirty dollars. And so, you know, that generic dynamic makes it really affordable from a cash pay model standpoint. But with insurance, we'll also be able to unlock other medications that do not have those availabilities. Uh, Andrew, walk us through some of the numbers here. So, 2021, you're looking for 30% year-over-year revenue growth and an adjusted EBITDA loss of $29 million. Now, your sales projection, the growth rate, that'd be slower than than last year at about what 67%, and your losses are expected to to increase. Has has something shifted in the business, or is this you guys being conservative out of the gate here? You know, we're, we like to be conservative out of the gate and make sure we we can hit and beat expectations we put out as a young company. I think that's really important to build credibility and trust with the street. But when you look at the business, even if you look at last quarter, the business is growing 90 percent year over year with 76 percent gross margins and in, increasingly improved cash efficiency quarter over quarter. And so I think what we have here is a is a business that inherently has incredibly robust revenue potential, given the fact that we operate in so many different verticals and so many different conditions. And then given the verticalization we've built, also inherently high margin structures, right, with 76% gross margins. So I think that combination of phenomenal revenue growth, high efficiency and margin structure, as well as being, I would say, on the forefront, and in many ways, I think the first inning of what will be a very long baseball game in this revolution in digital healthcare in the next five, 10 years, will make for an incredible investment opportunity for the public markets, one that, frankly, as a capital markets investor myself, I haven't seen in a very long time. And so I think we're all very excited about that combination of factors that you have here with hims and hers. Uh, Andrew, real quickly before we let you go, uh, when might the market see uh, fertility and diabetes products from you? That's a great question. You know, both of those categories, along with other uh, chronic conditions such as hypertension, high cholesterol, um, are really important to us as a team because we see them with very high prevalence within the thousands of patients that we treat per day. Um, To date, we've, we've seen almost 3 million medical consultations come through the platform in the last three years. And so we're able to identify these conditions such as those you mentioned that our, that our customers are really struggling with. And so what you'll see from us is every year, us launch a couple of new major categories um, and really invest in making those experiences wonderful, affordable, and beautiful to encourage people to try to get some care. So we're hoping uh, you know, this year or next year, you'll be able to see some of those new chronic conditions uh, enter, enter onto the platform. All right, we'll leave it there. Andrew Dudum, uh, co-founder and CEO of Hims and Hers. Good luck uh, in public company company life. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.